Before proceeding to the discussion of the rhetoric of the image, let us introduce first who is behind this classic semiotic text, Roland Barthes. He was born on November 12, 1915 in France and was died on March 25, 1980. He was a French semiologist and was one of the most important contemporary semioticians of consumer culture. In his essay, The Rhetoric of the Image, Barthes works along the lines of two theoretical distinctions, the connotation and the annotation, and the internal relations of the sign between the signifier and the signified. We have learned from Ferdinand de Saussure and Charles Sanders Peirce that semiotics or signs are made up of a signifier and a signified which constitute meanings. Barthes deviates from Saussure's idea that the relation between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary and argues that the connection between the two is a process that gets naturalized over a period of time. Signifier is defined as the form the design takes place, whereas signified as the concept to which it refers. The signified, according to Barthes, has two levels of meaning, the denotational and the connotational. The denotation is the dictionary meaning of the sign, while the connotation is the interpretative association that comes with the sign and is something which is culturally and context dependent. In Roland Barthes' essay, The Rhetoric of the Image, he uses semiotics in deconstructing signs or images manifested in an advertisement. Semiotics has become an important approach in deriving interpretations and meanings from an image of advertisements. Thus, the objective of the essay is to provide a framework in extracting symbolic messages in an image and present a natural and objective message. Using the Pansani advertisement, which is an Italian brand pasta, Barthes identified three classes of message within the image. These are the linguistic message, non-coded iconic message, and coded iconic message. Linguistic message, according to him, are always present in all images and all contexts. It composes of any form of text, such as captions, titles, and product labels, which can also be delivered in two ways. May it be through its literal message, or the so-called denotation, and symbolic message, which is the connotation. The text Pensani, for example, denotes the product brand, but it also connotes Italianicity. Aside from this twofold message, he also added that linguistic message has two functions which are the anchorage and the relay. Since images are prone to multiple meanings or polysimus, anchorage is used for a text to focus only on one meaning, or if not, to direct the viewers through the maze of possible meanings. It allows the viewers or readers to control their thoughts and keep them away from emerging connotations. Bart stated in the essay, that anchorage is the most common function of the linguistic message and is commonly found in press photographs and advertisement. In relay, on the other hand, text and image stands in complementary relationship wherein text supply meaning which is not present in the images themselves and the unity of the message is realized at the level of the story. Unlike anchorage, Relay is less common, which is usually seen in cartoons and comic strips. Given these functions, linguistic message has the power to elucidate and expedite the sequence of message in an advertisement. The second of Bard's three classes of message highlighted in the essay is the non-coded iconic message. The non-coded iconic message suggests the literal message we see when we look at the image or photograph. The visible images represent what they are signifying in reality. Therefore, in the advertisement analyzed by Barthes, the denoted image there is a picture of tomato representing a tomato. 
the image of pepper representing a pepper, and the likes. This type of message is not hard to comprehend. As Barthes stated in the essay, we need no other knowledge than what is involved in our perception. The notion suggests that as soon as we saw an image, we already knew what it is without putting much effort. Lastly, Barthes identifies coded iconic message and deciphering meanings behind the Pansani ad. The coded iconic message represents meaning that are connoted by the image apart from its literal meaning, such that of a half-open bag, which signifies return from the market, the tomatoes, peppers, and the color yellow, green, and red that signifies Italian city. And the collection of all the objects that signifies culinary service, which overall signifies the notion of still life. Barthes added that analyzing symbolic message requires a cultural knowledge because it will be difficult for viewers to come up with a meaning if they do not have a cultural background of the product. For instance, Barthes associates Panzani with Italian city as it relates or signifies Italy through the language and colors used in the ad. These factors help the advertisement render meaning and interpretation about the product. He also discussed that connoted image is very difficult task as each image can connote multiple meanings depending on how the viewer looks at an advertisement. Thus, we have arrived in realization that meaning is created not just by the creator but also by the viewer, consumer, and all the people who see the advertisement. Upon the analysis of Roland Barthes' essay, we have come in conclusion that rhetoric of the image is all about the visual elements within an image that can be considered as signifiers. Thus, the linguistic message has the function to elucidate or expedite the sequence of messages in an advertisement. Whereas denoted elements extend over the whole image, which therefore suggests that in analyzing the Panzani product, we deal with a normal system whose signs are drawn from a cultural code. Moreover, it can be seen that meaning is not created solely by the creator, the advertiser for instance, but also by the viewers, who in this example are basically the consumers. Through this essay, Barts provided us a useful tool for analyzing images or photographs as well as for understanding and appreciating how advertisers deliver messages that are persuasive and convincing.